Wow, what is this place? Well, look what's hidden here. Oh my, this is so beautiful. What on earth could have happened to it? What is this? Where am I? No, 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 no. I will find you, my love. Call of the Sea is a first-person adventure and puzzle game set on a mysterious island in the South Pacific. It's in that genre of games often called walking simulators, including What Remains of Edith Finch and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, two games which… yeah, I haven't played them. In it, you take control of Nora, a woman searching for her husband after he went missing during an expedition. The game was developed by Out of the Blue and published by Raw Fury, and is currently available on PC, Xbox Series X and S, and Xbox One for $19.99. It's also currently playable through Xbox Game Pass if you have it. Just a couple quick things to note, I'm only going to be showing footage from the game's first couple chapters, as showing the later ones would spoil some of the best moments in the game. Also, all of this footage is from the PC version of the game, although I originally played through it on Series X. The story begins with Nora arriving on an island located 74 nautical miles east of Tahiti in search of her husband Harry, who disappeared while searching for a cure to the unknown disease that Nora suffers from. While exploring the island, Nora discovers that, as you might guess, Harry's expedition didn't exactly go as planned, and now it's up to her to figure out what happened. Oh my goodness, what happened here? The developers said before release that they took inspiration from the works of H.P. Lovecraft, but when I first saw the trailer, I didn't see the resemblance. And then I started the game. No, no, so yeah, it takes inspiration from Lovecraft. Now. Games in this genre generally live or die based on the strength of their mysteries and overall story, and thankfully Call of the Sea doesn't disappoint. The characters have a great amount of depth to them, and are appropriately written for the 1930s, the time period the game is set in. The mystery at the game's core is well thought out, and I was thoroughly invested in solving it. Without spoiling anything, the story is full of twists, turns, and some shocking revelations. And while I still had some unanswered questions by the end, I was satisfied by how everything played out. The voice acting is great too. Sissy Jones, known for playing Delilah in Firewatch, gives a fantastic performance as Nora, bringing some real emotion and charming wit to the character. Oh, I must have found the luxury huts. Pretty swanky. Yuri Lowenthal also gives a great performance as Harry, who we mostly hear through audio logs and letters. My dear old pal, I know you won't ever read this letter. I'm accustomed to writing you, and it comforts me in this strange place." Nora also keeps track of the game's events by writing them down in her journal, while also giving some great insight into what she thinks of everything. I played Call of the Sea on Xbox Series X, and it is absolutely gorgeous at times. There are six chapters in the game, and each one takes place in a completely different location. There's vibrant jungles dark beaches, and creepy ruins. The lighting effects are wonderful, whether you're staring at a sunset or walking through the trees. This game is definitely a looker. There were many beautiful moments where I couldn't help but stop and slow pan. It seems this beauty comes with a slight cost of performance, however. I encountered a fair amount of frame dips during the first chapter, even on Series X. Thankfully, these dips disappeared once I got further into the game. Also, all of the various interactive objects and documents you find around the levels look great too, and have a nice amount of detail. Look at this little fellow.
Because it's in the so-called walking simulator genre, Call of the Sea's gameplay is relatively slow-paced, consisting mainly of exploring the environment and solving puzzles. This slow pace actually works in the game's favor story-wise, as it allows many of the most important moments and plot points in the story to happen naturally through gameplay. Oh, damn it. Someone on the expedition died. At the start of each chapter, you enter a new location, and, after slow panning for a bit, we'll start to look around the level for the puzzle you need to solve in order to progress. Some of the levels also have multiple puzzles, and you'll have to figure out which one you need to do first. By exploring the areas, you'll find clues in the form of objects, documents, or scenery around the level. Nora also keeps track of anything important you find in her journal, and it's important to keep looking at it to see if you're still missing something. Here's a tip. Search everywhere. All of the information you need for each puzzle is in the level, and is often tucked away where it can easily be missed if you aren't actively searching for it. Also, while many of the puzzles are heavily logic-based, don't be afraid to just try something and think outside the box, as experimenting is sometimes the best way to make progress. Overall, the puzzles are well designed, and make you feel really clever when you solve them. So here's another tip. Don't be like me and look up some of the answers when you get stuck, because more likely than not, you'll realize you missed something blindingly obvious that was right in front of your face and feel really, really stupid. <clears throat> Each of the game's six chapters take around 45 minutes to an hour to complete, depending on how long it takes you to solve the puzzles, leading to an experience that's around six hours long, which feels like the perfect length for a game like this. Call of the Sea's soundtrack, composed by Eduardo de la Iglesia, sorry if I mispronounced that, is a lovely set of tracks that fit the theme of the game. They range from a nice, serene calm, to a much more eerie and unsettling tone. And they fit the sections of the game they're placed in very well. The soundtrack may not massively stand out on its own, apart from the surprisingly emotional end credit song, but it does add to the game and help complete it, and I'm very glad it's there. Call of the Sea is a lovely journey across a visually stunning island. It has a great, engaging mystery at its core, and an overall story that left quite the impression on me, along with a fantastic performance from its lead. There are plenty of places to explore, and a number of challenging but satisfying puzzles to solve. So, if you're looking for an adventure to lose yourself in for an afternoon, Call of the Sea is the game for you. Okay, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. One, two, don't forget the harmony. One, two, three. All right, and with that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll have more videos coming soon. And until next time, remember, don't look up the answers to the puzzles. <laughs>